My name is Mark Luray. I'm the Taxation Director at Safra Champness in Guernsey. I deal with a whole host of tax matters offshore, trust and company. I deal with all areas of offshore tax compliance, which increasingly international tax compliance is a, is a really important part of what, what we do at Safri. So that includes FATCA, CRS and economic substance. I deal with a, a wide variety of offshore trust and companies, uh, looking at the tax compliance obligations of those, of those entities. I also work closely with a wide variety of professional advisors to ensure that any trusts or companies that we look after, that the tax compliance is, is adhered to. Since joining Safri's, I've seen the tax compliance legislation just, just mushroom. The, the world we're in is just so different to where we are when, we, when I joined the firm. One of the things that I truly believe is that the reputation that Safri's had locally when I joined the firm is now something that's recognised internationally. Economic substance is all about having a, a presence in the jurisdiction. Um, so this, this presence is what's known as having economic substance. It's about ensuring that you're not just a, a brass plate on a door, and that's something that Guernsey PLC and Safri Champness, that's never been our business model. There are certain offshore jurisdictions where you could have a number of companies that are incorporated there, but there's no, there's no presence on the island, on the offshore jurisdiction. So economic substance is all about ensuring that you have got presence as well as a, as a nameplate on the door. Nearly five years ago, the EU Code of Conduct Group looked at tax transparency in a number of jurisdictions. Guernsey was reviewed to see its level of tax transparency and we passed with flying colours. There was certainly no issue about tax transparency in Guernsey. However, what the EU Code of Conduct Group did say that there were a number of offshore jurisdictions where there was a risk that those offshore jurisdictions could be used to artificially attract profits. So it was from that that the economic substance legislation was uh, introduced. And it's there to ensure that companies undertaking certain activities are properly directed and controlled in the jurisdiction and that they have adequate premises, people and expenditure on the island. So you can see that it's very much looking at tackling those brass plate type offshore jurisdictions. Each company must submit a, an income tax return each year that evidences that it's got economic substance on the island. That, that return is applicable if you've got certain income from nine specified activities. Those activities include banking, insurance, headquartering, and finance and leasing, for, for example. It's something that I think goes back to the, the EU savings tax directive. That's approximately 15 years ago, I'd say now. Um, it, it's the first piece of legislation that I can think where you had an automatic exchange of information. From that, about 10 years ago, we moved to US FATCA, where again you had automatic reporting. Um, go back five years, we had the common reporting standard, where the OECD got involved to ensure that there was an automatic exchange of information around the world to the countries that had, that, that had joined up. And that takes us right bang up to the current day with economic substance. A key thing that you can say with all these pieces of legislation is that tax information is being given to tax jurisdictions around the world automatically. That may not necessarily be the case with economic substance. Certainly IP, there's an automatic exchange of certain information. But the key thing is to, to be able to understand that tax authorities have far more information than that they, they used to. Something like that shouldn't be a concern to clients that are properly managed. Um, whilst jurisdictions may have more information gathering powers and will have more information at their, their fingertips, the key thing is if the structure is well maintained, is looked after properly, you have the right people 
the right qualifications and that you're working together with the right professional advisors and intermediaries, then the right information is going to be declared to those tax jurisdictions. It's something not to be afraid of. A key thing is to ensure that even though tax may not be a driver for a structure, that all the tax implications have been thoroughly thought about beforehand. The last thing you want to do, even if it hasn't been created for a tax purpose, is to create a tax problem because that tax problem could be hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of problems. So the key thing is get it right first time. You've got to have the right people on board, the right management, the right questioning of the structure to ensure that you don't fall foul of tax legislation. And I do think that that's something that puts Safri Chapners apart from competitors. We've always prided ourselves on having the right people at the right level, the right qualifications to ensure that we can adequately manage assets under our control.